I've finally found a Photoshop plugin that I love, and I have a feeling you guys just might love it too. I'm Abby Esparza with Photomanipulation.com, and I'm super excited to be partnering up with the Boris FX to talk to you about optics. A Photoshop plugin that I can say with absolute sincerity is the only plugin I've ever looked at and went, oh sh**, I can use this, like actually use it. Because when it comes to plugins, it's always about automation. They do the work and you sit back and accept whatever they give you, which is fine. I'm not anti-plugin, I'm just pro-control, something other plugins fail to offer. But Optics delivers in absolute spades. This video is sponsored by Boris FX, and so I have a 25% discount to all of you who want to grab Optics for yourself right down in the description. All that aside, these are 100% my true and honest thoughts. And I think Optics has something you guys are going to be just as hyped about as I am. It's lighting effects. Now, Optics isn't just for lighting. Trust me, it's just the tip of a super cool iceberg, but that's just what we're going to focus on today. So first, I'm going to convert one of my images into a smart object. This makes it so you can adjust any of the Optics filters later on down the line. And then filter, Boris FX, Optics. Hop into light, and then we're going to start with lens flares. So see, I wasn't lying when I said lighting is just one of the many tricks Optics has under its sleeve, but its lens flares are chef's kiss. Tons of presets, Hollywood approved presets, but the thing about these is none of them are just plopped on. All of them are dynamic, a buzzword I don't love to use but is 100% applicable here. We can drag and the lens flare reacts to the location placed, reacting as a real lens flare would, changing shape and color with smaller flares coming and going. Then we can also adjust the individual parts of the lens flare. Pivot the outer lens flare bits, I'm assuming bits is the technical term here. We can also drag on this circle to adjust the physical size of the source of the lens flare. And the arrow here adjusts the height. And since realistically your light source won't be changing, the position you place the lens flare in doesn't change when selecting a different preset. So you don't have to readjust over and over again, which is something I really appreciate. But whatever, cool, fine, great, this gets you on my good side, but doesn't win me over. Because this is what wins me over. The parameters tab lets you adjust every aspect of the lens flare. The color, the light bits and rays, the shape, the hardness, along with adding things like atmosphere, which adds a light or heavy, a touch of cloudy dust to your flare. But when I said every aspect, I technically lied, because let's say you like this portion of the lens flare, but not this light trail right here. The parameters tab can't remove that but the edit lens flare panel sure can. This is where you can completely edit or create a genuinely infinite amount of lens flares. Elements can be added, taken away, and adjusted. You have even greater color control over each individual part of your lens flare. And then each new or edited flare can then be saved as its very own preset. That being said, if this seems like a lot, uh, because it's a lot for me, I already know for myself that the presets and parameter settings are going to be all I personally need. But this still really sold me on optics being more than your average plugin. It doesn't aim to do it for you, it just facilitates your ability to do it for yourself, if that makes sense. And while I'm showing these on images inside of optics, if you're wondering if you can place these on a black background and then use them as you would a normal lens flare texture in Photoshop, then the answer is 100% yes. Bringing us to my favorite, the light glints. So most optic filters will have their own set of controls and parameters. In this case, these paths adjust the directional length of the light. Um, I find pulling on these so satisfying. The red, blue, and yellow circles adjust the red, blue, and yellow channels of the light, adjusting the colors. With the white circle adjusting the size of the light collectively. I love any filter that directly reacts to the image it's being applied to. Especially with this image, I love the little glint of the moon on her forehead here. Um, these little touches really do it for me. And just like the lens flares, you can adjust the parameters, uh, the brightness and the threshold being the biggies for me. Let's make this a little less blinding. 
And I forgot to mention, if you're messing with parameters and the placement is good to go, you can always hide the paths and get them out of the way. All filters have this option. Now, the glints don't have an edit button like the lens flares do, or a placement option, but as I said, they react directly to the image's pre-existing light source. Bringing us to the option of combining and layering effects. Because Optics has both layers and layer masks that I definitely want to at least touch on a little bit. Let's click New Layer and let's throw on a Lens Flare. And then we can arrange the layers, bringing the Lens Flare below the glint. And since this amount of Lens Flare would make even JJ Abrams blush, let's go back to the glint and tone this down a smidge. All effects remain active and customizable. And then good old layer masks work exactly how you want them to work. Add a mask and then choose how you want to mask. From gradients to an auto select easy mask option and my preferred which is to just paint. So there is a whole slew of other lighting effects, but I want to spotlight some of my standouts. First being these Gobo-esque lighting effects. They are right at the top of my list since I've been wanting to play with more interesting shapes for cast and shadows, making shadows an actual focal point. You can see one of my experiments in my top tips for shadows video. I didn't use optics for that, it was more of a casted shadow where optics focuses on a casted light, but these work exactly how I want them to work. Especially since we have a displacement setting here, which will help mold the lighting to its subject. Next, let's take a look at the aura effects, because I think you guys are really going to eat these up. All of the presets are a little different, but most are based on this path. You can then completely freely drag the points of the path to adjust the winding shape of that path. You also have arrows to adjust the angle, and my favorite bit, you can adjust the position of the light source. I'm going to do a nice little winding shape real quick like, and then let's hop into parameters, and we have color control, control over the physical shapes being generated, uh, control over the light source itself, and of course, all of these different presets can be adjusted just the same. There are tons, including these magical swishes, that really beat any kind of a similar effect in brush form due to them being so dynamic and adjustable. This one here, and then the rolling noise, and any of the Aurora Borealis inspired ones are the ones that really do it for me. Uh, but there are also smoke and fire options, just a whole lot of really cool stuff here. Bringing us to the rays, specifically the edge rays, which normally is never an effect I ever lean towards because, well, they're usually pretty lackluster. Thanks to how dynamic, a word of the day clearly, and how adjustable the parameters are, it gives me what I want out of a light ray filter, which is actual light rays. I already have a couple of presets here, and layer masks are always a must with filters like these. And honestly, between the layer masks, layers, and parameters, optics is what you want the Photoshop filters to be, but you know, it's just never going to be. And that's what it needed to be to win me over. It needed to be something I didn't have, and it won me over, it did it. It only took me 10 years to find a Photoshop plugin that I actually like. Remember, you can grab optics for yourself and get a tasty 25% off using the link down in the description. I do get a small commission off of every sale, but I'm excited to rip into optics and see what I can really do with it. It's definitely a permanent fixture in my own workflow. If you want to see the full scope of my workflow and how my Photoshop setup fits right into it, maybe check out my how to set up Photoshop video and learn why layers being on the left is superior in every way. I'm Abby Esparza with photomanipulation.com. See you next time.